Hello there, Patreon subscribers. Nice to see ya. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you very much for your patronage. It is very, very much appreciated. As requested last month, um, this is a video that you've requested on the Crawling Claw. Um, it's a interesting little undead beastie, and uh, much like the uh, little intro um, here with the, the thing uh, from the Adams family, the Crawling Claw is an unusual undead um, its main power is that it cannot be turned, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the basic stats of it, it's a tiny undead, it's uh, listed as neutral evil. It's got an armor class of 12, 2 hit points, speed of 20 feet, and climb of 20 feet, which makes it about the same speed as a lizard. Uh, it's got a strength of 13, which is enormously high for something of its size and limited abilities. Uh, its dexterity is 14, the constitution is 11, it's got a basic intelligence of 5, which means it's animal-like, um, it's driven by uh, carnal desires of murder, um, because it is taken from beings who were evil in life, and the negative emotions of uh, hate, and envy, and jealousy, and greed, and uh, psychosis is what drives the life force of this thing, it's, it's what its negative energy is derived from. It's got a wisdom of 10, uh, so it's able to suss out its environment, and a charisma of 4, because essentially all it can do is give you the fingers. Uh, damage immunity to poison, uh, charmed, exhaustion, and poisoning. It's got blind sight out to 30 feet. Um, this is essentially how they talk about tremor sense in 5th edition. Uh, and it's blind beyond this radius. It can feel out things. It can feel the vibrations in the ground underneath its fingers. It can feel air currents. Um, and temperature changes and things like that, so it's, it's fairly sensitive. Uh, passive perception is 10, so that's for somebody walking by it and making a thump somewhere. Languages, it understands common, but obviously it can't speak. If the individual knew some form of sign language, such as a thief's hand signals in life, it may be able to communicate that way. It can't be taught new things. It has no brain. Uh, challenge rating is 0. So for 10 experience points. So you can have these things littered around the uh, the environment of a necromancer's lair uh, with relative impunity. You can put them all over the place. They are immune to being turned. Uh, effects that turn the undead. So they're not, um, they're not driven by outside power per se. Uh, they are, there's a different type of necromatic ritual in, involved here and a different type of power source that divine... Um, casters have difficulty cutting off um, they're, they're just a difficult target to, to affect and um, this is crucial uh, particularly if you're using them as a terrain environmental uh, type effect uh, where you have a mass of these things who are going up against uh, divine casters and a necromancer would be well advised to use these things in their, ter their domain um, against just that effect, so that you can have the Crawling Claw leaps up and makes a claw attack, plus three to hit, uh, doing three points of bludgeoning or slashing damage, it's the claw's choice. Um, and I would say a, a certain mass of these things that are able to link fingers against each other would form living chains, um, or they could be perhaps even um, fixed to the ground, there could be um, finger holes or... Um, they could even be nailed to the to the ground, or they could be part of the flagstones or something like that. Um, and they would grab and restrain a divine caster whilst uh, being throttled by other one of these that are seeking out its neck and seeking to slash wrists and poke fingers and eyeballs and um, up nostrils and things like that. They're quite nasty little beasties. So the origin of these things is it's a, a, a relatively obscure but um, commonly dis dispersed... Uh, necromantic ritual that's different from raising something like a zombie. These are not a zombie. Um, they're not a skeleton either. They're animated by the actual living psyche of the being who possessed that limb. Unlike uh, skeletons and zombies and such, which are basically just a corpse vehicle that is animated by an outside um, evil force. The Crawling Claw is animated by the spirit of that individual themselves. So their vulnerability um, if not being turned as an outsider, is the fact that they can be resurrected, um, or the spirit of that individual is held unnaturally in that body part, so that it, they can actually be returned 
to life or passed on to another um, state of existence if they've if they've been dead too long before the ritual is is cast. So the ritual can fail uh, because the body is just not suitable. This the spirit has passed on. Or it can fail because somebody has found the rest of the body and has uh, cast some sort of spell which will um, turn, basically get rid of that um, that soul off the, the plane of existence um, or res- resurrect that soul and uh, end the effect of it being trapped inside that hand. So the typical um, way that these are created is that the um, when a necromancer finds out that there's a murderer who is about to be executed they'll go and find uh, the recently slain body they'll have a deal they'll pay some money and take a body part Um, of course nobody cares Uh, it's a murderer so if there's a hand missing nobody really nobody really worries about it Um, and nobody really suspects what's what the necromancers are up to they may just think it's some sort of anatomy experiment or or some such Um, or perhaps it's part of an alchemical formula um, which has beneficial effect who knows organ donation um, but of course what they're actually doing is uh, a foul ritual which is um, a torturous punishment beyond death for the the murderer of course the murderer isn't um, their full psyche isn't in the crawling claw uh, it's it's really stripped away so it's it's kept in a slumbering state before between passing between the the material realm and the ethereal um, and passing on to whatever um, afterlife that it was supposed to go to. So, yeah. And of course, if the murderer is somebody, is an NPC, for instance, this is where it gets interesting, if the murderer is an NPC whose soul is supposed to go to the Nine Hells because they made a pact or some such, then you've got a very interesting story element involved because devils may actually have a vested interest in this soul passing on. Um, and they may recruit the forces of good to find the original body of this individual and provide the means to resurrect them, uh, simply so that they can later wait, either wait until the murderer eventually dies again, um, or orchestrate its murder somehow, and uh, get their, their soul as is their due, because the letter of the law must be obeyed. Um, and a contract is a contract, and there is no loopholes. Uh, necromancers, of course, may possibly investigate if this is the case, if the uh, individual has any sort of weird um, aspect to their, their past, perhaps resources at their disposal which they couldn't, shouldn't naturally have, but really it's almost impossible to tell if such a, a, a transaction has transpired um, unless you have other additional resources for d- divining, or if you um in league with a devil which would know the truth um, but of course devils don't know everything about other devils activities far from it so that's an interesting story element that you could um, expand the role of a crawling claw enormously in your campaign um, other aspects is if it's a notable uh, a noble or some such that is a murderer um, it could get tricky if um, there's some sort of involvement there like say the the hand is wearing a signet ring um, that is recognized as belonging to somebody or if yeah something else I'd, I'd leave it up to your imagination how that could be construed um, if the individual is well known before death otherwise um, it's not very good for anything if there's um, sufficient negative energy in the individual like a really really foul-hearted fiend um, they may well pass, uh, particularly if they're killed in unhallowed ground that is soaked with uh, negative energy from some sort of atrocity that happened in the past. They may well rise as a, a wraith or um, a white or some revenant or something like that of their own accord. A necromancer would know if such a possibility is going to um, come about because they will know areas which are soaked in necromantic energy anyway, um, in entropic force and uh, they'll probably say "Eh, you shouldn't kill this person here because there's a chance that um, they may spontaneously come back as an abomination against all that you hold dear Um, and on my advice I think it will take them over to this um, this location I prepared in order to kill them properly or set uh, set up a public gallery and and such Uh, and we've got a hangman's noose here and they'll drop down into this box here shielded from public view so that we can get rid of the body Um, without offending anyone 
Meanwhile, they're down in the box with a cleaver at hand and do the uh, the ritual on the spot and walk away with um, a little helper in a sack. So yeah, that's Crawling Claws for you. Please let me know if uh, what you want for next month's bonus video. Um, I'm happy to bring you um, anything, even if it's covering an old, old monster from before, if it's an environment or, or any sort of other video that you want me to, to make talking about any particular subject. Um, just let me know. And thank you once again for your patronage. It's much appreciated. And I'll talk to you again soon.